Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. From Homestead Media, this is HHS In-Depth. Today's Friday, March 1st, and welcome back to HHS In-Depth. Let's begin with a quick overview of today's show. First up, Matthew Ahn tells us about Homestead Live and what this team of students does during live broadcast. Next up, Mara Nicholson brings us an update on the FCC LA Coffee Bar and the recent move they have made. Finally, Taylor Ham tells us about mental health resources available to students. We'll also get an update on this weekend's weather, a look into performing arts and behind the curtain, and we will end today's show with Down to the Wire, where you'll get a recap of this week's sports, as well as learn about a big award presented to a Homestead coach. All of this and more today, only on HHS In Depth. Hello Spartans, welcome to HHS In Depth. I'm Carly Swymiller. And I'm Josh Bobe. And Carly, what are your thoughts on the weather these past few days? I've really enjoyed the warm weather, but the thunderstorm that happened a couple nights ago was not in my favor. The thunderstorm was crazy, but I've really been loving the warm weather that's been coming through. Yes. Weather reporter Matthias Arismendi is in now to let us know what's to come for this weekend. Well, Josh and Carly, the weather has been all over the place, and while it might be warm now, tomorrow gets even warmer. I'll be back later on in the show to tell you what we can expect next week. Thanks for the update, Matthias. Matthias will be back later to let us know what we can expect for our upcoming weekend and beyond. HHS In-Depth, National News. Switching now to national news, last Thursday, major phone company AT&T had a major network outage that affected more than 70,000 customers. The company said in a statement the day of that it was not a cyber attack, but an incorrect process that occurred while they were expanding their network. AT&T promised all customers a $5 credit and implied that it could take two bill cycles to take effect. Switching to more sports-related news, a sealed carton of hockey player cards that may contain Wayne Gretzky's rookie card was sold for $3.7 million at auction on Monday. The buyer will receive the cardboard box filled with 48 packs of OPG hockey cards from the 1979-1980 season. There is a possible two dozen of the rookie cards in all the packs, and each card could sell for upwards of millions of dollars. Thank you, Josh, for the national news update. Carly, as you know, we are both part of the Homestead Live team. For sure. And I feel like a lot of people don't know what we do behind the scenes at Homestead events. Reporter Matthew Otten joins us now to tell us what Homestead Live truly is and the amazing things we as a team do for the school. Whether you can't attend a basketball or football game or not leaving your house, the official source of Homestead Athletics is Homestead Live. But you might wonder what it takes to make a great broadcast and how students can get involved next year. Um, I am the producer for Homestead Live, which means that I show up early, um, I set up the graphics, I make some of the graphics, and um, get everything prepared in our software for the live stream. My job for Homestead Live, I am the technical director and I go and switch between different cameras and I go and help out people who work, like who do the camera work, especially people down on the floor. But I just mess over here with the switcher board and I control what everybody sees at home. With basketball winding down, they have enjoyed making memories throughout their four years of high school. Uh, my favorite part of being producer has to be coming to all of the games and kind of being a part of the games in a way that I couldn't be before. So instead of just being a student in the student section, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of participating in the games. My favorite part has just been doing all of the behind the scenes work, seeing what happens. And then at home, if I go back and watch the live stream, I can see the final product. And 
it's just really nice being like, if I mess up, people at home can see, and I just like that type of pressure. With some members leaving, they are hoping that new members have the opportunity to learn how to operate a camera, switcher, or being the producer for Homestead Live. Students can get involved in Homestead Live. We can set you guys up with basic camera operator positions, and then you work your way up. You can be involved by joining the class or being in any other type of the media programs that we have here at Homestead. And you just talk to the teachers and during one of the games, you can get a chance and you'll most likely just be thrown on one of the cameras. If you are interested in being a part of the best high school broadcast in the state, please reach out to Mr. Dunn or Mr. Shanko at the email address shown here. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Matthew Otten. Thanks for the story, Matthew. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on HHS In Depth. Jess in depth. Auditions for the Homestead Theater Department Spring Musical Mamma Mia are next Tuesday and Wednesday, March 5th and March 6th from 5 to 7 p.m. in Mr. Shaw's classroom. Callbacks will be held on March 7th from 5 to 7 p.m. Mamma Mia is the first musical held in the new HHS Auditorium. Sign up for a time slot on Mr. Shaw's choir room door. The Homestead Guidance Department invites you to attend the annual college and apprenticeship fair. It takes place Monday, March 4th, 2024 in the Homestead Cafeteria from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Attendees should plan to park and enter through the new door one. The college fair is free and open to all students and your parents. All juniors and seniors will be eligible to sign up for a chance to win a one-time $200 scholarship. Homestead will host over 60 representatives such as IU Bloomington, Purdue West Lafayette, Ball State, Indiana State, Harvard, St. Francis, Western Michigan, Michigan University, and many more will be in attendance of this year's fair. In addition, financial institutions will be on site to help answer your questions about applying for student loans and scholarship opportunities. If you have any questions about this year's college and apprenticeship fair, please stop by Student Services and see Mr. Sherman in room 519. Homestead is going to Japan in the spring of 2026, and you're invited. See the cherry blossoms in bloom and visit Tokyo, Mount Fuji, and Kyoto. Register for the March 7th information session to be held in the gray box at 6.30 p.m. for parents and students. Please RSVP using the QR codes found around the school or the ones shown on your screen. This informational meeting will be discussing how this opportunity will benefit you, what you'll see and do in Japan, the opportunity to earn academic credit, trip safety and pricing, and how to enroll on this trip during EF's risk fee enrollment period. There are limited spots available, so we would love for you to attend this meeting and learn more about this exciting opportunity. Josh, are you a coffee drinker? Honestly not, it's pretty nasty. With the amount of money I burn at Mocha Lounge each week, I cannot agree with you. Reporter Mara Nicholson brings us a story now on FCC LA and how they are doing with their recent location move. Attention early risers. Ever feel that morning grogginess hit you like a ton of bricks? Well, have no fear because the FCCL Coffee Bar has a solution brewing for you. At the Coffee Bar's new location across from the old media center, they have a cup of joe with your name on it, courtesy of the FCCLA, the club that's not just about coffee, but fostering leadership and community engagement. FCCLA stands for Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, and was previously known as Future Homemakers of America. The original organization was founded in 1945, when 29 home economics leaders gathered at a convention in hopes of creating one national student organization aimed at preparing today's students to be tomorrow's leaders in the home and workplace. 
Not only did this provide students with the opportunity to learn new skills, but they strive to offer opportunities for students to make decisions and assume responsibilities. The FCCLA club at Homestead has followed this goal and have taken on the responsibilities of running the coffee bar every morning for students. Senior Grace Hatch says that money-wise, they don't get a whole lot, but with experiences and opportunities, you do. You learn a lot of leadership skills and how to communicate better and how to work with people. So you are learning a lot of real life skills. It's obvious that the FCCLA is doing their part for the community and you can do yours too by stopping by and ordering any of their drinks. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Mara Nicholson. Thanks, Mara. Changing topics, it is common for many teenagers to struggle with their mental health and feel alone in the battle. That's very true, and it's important to know that there is help available for you inside the walls of Homestead. Reporter Taylor Hamm now brings us more information. Every day, hundreds of students walk Homestead's halls, but what most don't know is that many of the passing by faces can actually be struggling on the inside. So what can be done to help? I would say one of the biggest aspects of mental health is having a positive outlook. Um, just being able to look on the bright side of things. Homestead provides so many opportunities to increase your health. Finding those activities, maybe those extracurriculars, those clubs, sports, those outlets to help bring up your mental health. Because if we're not doing those things, we can see a downfall, we can see a slide. With 366 days this year due to leap year, the school year consists of about 242 days, which can be a lot of stress on students. But thankfully, there's around 124 days for students to have long breaks, such as fall, Thanksgiving, winter, spring, and summer, allowing their mindsets to refresh. School breaks really help me to decompress and I'm able to relax and not worry about all the stress from school. Also, during breaks, I'm able to go to therapy and talk about problems I'm having outside of school. Therapy helped me connect with my family along with my siblings better when we were going through tough times. I know some people don't wanna to go to therapy because they think it's weird or they find it uncomfortable to talk to other people, but talking to a therapist can really help you get your feelings out. And mental health is really important when it comes to school because if your mental health isn't good, then your focus at school isn't gonna be good and you're gonna fall behind on assignments and classes. While there are many ways to help yourself, always be willing to help others. It may seem inadequate, but you can always put a smile on someone's face. And if you yourself are struggling, don't be afraid to reach out. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Taylor Hamm. Thank you, Taylor. We'll be back with more on HHS In Depth right after this. Our winter sports teams are finishing out their seasons with a few still left in postseason play. I'll return with final scores and more information on how our teams did later in the show in Down to the Wire. Welcome back to HHS In Depth. Welcome back to HHS In Depth. And Josh, I saw on Instagram that today Zesto's is opening. Are you excited? Absolutely. My go-to is the twist cone, but I'm wondering if the temperatures this weekend will even be warm enough for an ice cream run. Well, reporter Matthias Ayers-Mendy is in now to let us know if these warm temperatures we have seen these past few days are here to stay in this upcoming week. Thanks, Josh and Carly. I'm glad to say the week warms up significantly, with today getting to a high of 47, with the temps dropping to 38 later in the evening. If you're looking for a day to grab ice cream, both Saturday and Sunday would be perfect. Both days are going to be in the 60s, with Saturday just reaching 60 and Sunday getting up to 69. So make an effort to get out and enjoy the nice weather. Moving in the next week, the temps stay up, with Monday getting to 67 and Tuesday reaching 53. But it does look like Monday will have a chance of rain. Wednesday and Thursday stay warm, with both being in the high 50s. We'll see 57 on Wednesday and 59 on Thursday. Although the official start of spring is March 19th, it definitely feels like spring has already sprung. Josh, Carly, back to you. Thank you, Matthias. Well, it seems as though the groundhog did not lie. Agreed. Josh, have you heard anything about how show choir did this past weekend? I've heard absolutely nothing, but reporter Emily Adams can tell us more in this week's edition of Behind the Curtain. Welcome back to Behind the Curtain. I'm Emily Adams. 
We're in the midst of the performing arts competitive seasons, and there were plenty of incredible scores to go around. To begin, the show choirs performed at Huntington North last week, and Elite had a great performance in the morning, with Lydia Shaw getting outstanding performer. Ultimately, the team placed fourth with only five points between the top four finalists. The outstanding performer was senior Carissa Barker. Additionally, two seniors both placed in the top three for the solo competition, Mia Galvin in third and Anna Ousley in second. Congratulations, ladies. The choirs will be back at Cherubusco this Saturday. Moving on, the past weekend, Homestead Dance Team performed at regionals at Lake Central. JV led the way, getting second place in both hip-hop and jazz with 77.93 points and 78.85 points, respectively. Following them up, the varsity got third place in both hip-hop with 85.03 and jazz with 87.13 points. The teams will be at state on Sunday at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Good luck, ladies. Next up, the Homestead Jazz Bands will perform at Isma State Qualifiers at Carroll. And on Saturday, Jazz Women will visit Ball State for their second-to-last competition of the year. Best of luck to them. Next up, the Winter Guard competed at Carroll. JV got 7th with a score of 62.620, and Varsity placed 1st with 68.5 points. That's all for this week's edition of Behind the Curtain, and if you have any scores, performances, auditions, or anything else you'd like to see on the show, reach out to the email address shown below. For Behind the Curtain, I'm Emily Adams. Carly and Josh, back to you. Thanks, Emily, and good luck to all the performers in action this weekend. Moving forward, let's take a look at what our Spartan athletes have been up to over the past week. Reporter Bryce Garrett is in now to let us know in Down to the Wire. Welcome back to Down to the Wire. I'm Bryce Garrett. This season of winter sports is coming to an end with our last few teams competing in postseason play. Today's episode starts with our boys basketball team who won their sectional quarterfinal game on Tuesday against Huntington North. After a close battle in the first three quarters of play, the Spartans pulled away in the fourth quarter, winning the game 64-53. Will Jamison put on a show with 31 points and four rebounds. And Josh Rogers put up 15 points and four rebounds. Good luck to the basketball team as they take on Columbia City tonight at 7.30. Last Saturday, our gymnastics team competed at Concordia in sectional play. The team placed third with a final score of 107.225. Jillian Krieger placed first in all around and Molly Wilkins placed third in all around. Good luck to the gymnastics team as they compete in regionals tomorrow morning at Huntington North. Also last Saturday, Thomas Davis placed 10th at state in boys dive. Congratulations to Thomas and the rest of the swim and dive team. Good luck next season. We've also seen more Spartans sign their letter of intent. Last Friday, Cassie Ayers signed to continue her golf career at IUPUI. And yesterday, our baseball team had four members who signed their letter of intent. Mason Weaver signed to Wooford, Alex Graber to NIU, and both Nathan and Jacob Bardwell signed to Saginaw Valley State University. Congratulations. We all know that earlier this year, our girls cross country team won their first ever state title. More recently, their coach also won an award. Reporter Grace Dickmeyer joins us now with more information. Our very own Mrs. Witt has won many awards for stellar cross country coaching, one being the IAT CCC Cross Country Coach of the Year Award. We were at, the, at our um, Indiana Association of Track and Cross Country Coaches Clinic on Friday. Um, I I felt a bit overwhelmed. Um, this is uh, the award comes um, from votes by your peers. So there were 800 coaches there, and to um, and, and to think that they that my peers thought highly of me, I, I was I was overwhelmed by by their generosity, and 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 I think that I didn't realize that maybe you know they had they held me in high esteem. So that made me feel pretty good. Coach Wiss's peers are not the only ones to hold her in high esteem, as her athletes admire her dedication and perseverance. Her running program here at Homestead has helped shape me into like the athlete I am today and prepared me for going on to college. She challenges me to be a better athlete each day. She spends her Sunday afternoon writing out personalized comic cards to each girl on the team, reflecting on their performance and giving them advice to build upon for the next race. 
Coach Rose's belief in me as an athlete has caused me to grow as a runner, a student, and a teammate. Each day at practice and each day at a meet, she challenges me to push myself to new levels. And going into the state meet, like, no one thought we would win it. And Coach Wiss would come into practice every day and remind us, like, what we're just capable of and that we can do it if we believe in ourselves and each other. And if we did, the um, trophy would be ours, and we did it. Our cross-country team had a spectacular season, and a team performance always reflects on their coach. Congratulations to Mrs. Wiss on an amazing season. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Grace Dickmeyer. Thank you, Grace. Tonight, our boys' basketball team will be back in action at Spartan Arena for their sectional semifinal game against the Columbia City Eagles. The theme is whiteout, and tip-off will be at 7.30. That's all for this edition of Down to the Wire. Thanks for watching. Carly, Josh, back to you. Thank you, Bryce, for the sports update. And thank you all for watching HHS In-Depth. Make sure to check out our socials for updates on the HHS In-Depth team and our upcoming projects. Have a fabulous weekend, Homestead, and we'll see you again here next week.